So everyone's heard of Amazon Echo and Google Home, but there's another option, Mycroft. Mycroft is an open source voice assistant project. You can buy the Mycroft Mark II for about $200. But if you don't wanna spend that much, or if you just wanna play with it for fun and bide your time as it continues to be developed, you can build your own. The DIY version of the Mycroft is called PyCroft, because it's based on a Raspberry Pi. That makes sense. The steps for building the PyCroft can be found at this website. But since a lot of us are visual learners, I'll go through it for you in this video. First off, these are the parts you're gonna need. A Raspberry Pi 3, B or B plus. Unfortunately, the Pi 2 or the zero just won't cut it. You're gonna need a power supply and an SD card with at least eight gigabytes. You also need a USB microphone. Probably the cheapest way to get a USB microphone that'll work is to buy the PS3i. It's a camera, but it's also a microphone, and it's already ready to work with the PyCroft software. For a speaker, the easiest thing to do is just get a powered speaker that has a 3.5 millimeter connector. There are some USB speakers that might work, but not a lot of them are supported at this point. The Jabra 410 is a combination microphone speaker that is supported by the PyCroft software. I have this Boya conference call microphone speaker, and the microphone works great, but so far, I haven't got it to work as a USB speaker. Once you've got all your parts gathered, it's time to start putting them together. Step one is to go to this website and download the PyCroft image. Then use something like Etcher to write that image to the SD card. Put the SD card in your Pi, connect your speaker and your microphone, connect an ethernet cable because you will need access to the internet, and then power it up. To go through the setup process, you can either connect a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse to your Pi, or you can use SSH and access your PyCroft remotely from another computer. I chose to use the SSH method. To do that, you first need the IP address that your network has given the PyCroft. The easiest way to do that is usually to look in your router for a new device. Then open a terminal window and type in SSH Pi at your IP address. The default password is Mycroft, all lowercase letters. The first time you fire up your PyCroft, it'll give you the option of running through the setup wizard. Unless you're a power user, you probably want to say yes. For the speakers, most of us are going to choose option one. Here it lets you test the audio and set a default volume. The next step is to select your microphone. To test your microphone, it lets you record a sound and then it plays it back to you. If you can hear it, it sounds fine. You're done with that part. For the update pathway, again, most of us are going to choose option one, unless you want to manually manage your updates. In that case, you can choose option two. For root access, I chose option one. And finally, it gives you the option to change the default password from Mycroft to something else. When it starts back up, it'll open the Mycroft command line client. You'll probably get used to seeing this page because you'll use it a lot to know what Mycroft is doing. The first time it opens, it'll give you a pairing code. That's what you see in the yellow text in the lower left. Next, go to mycroft.ai, register and log in if you haven't already, then click the arrow in the upper right, then Devices. Then Add New Device. Then enter your registration code. Give your Mycroft device a name. This isn't the wake word. This is just to distinguish your Mycroft devices if you have more than one. And then put something about the location. Finally click OK, let's pair. Now click the arrow in the upper right again. This time hit Settings. And you can start playing around with some of the basic and advanced settings. Under basic, you can choose your units of measurement and which voice you want Mycroft to use. There are two local voice options, which as it says here, guarantees the most privacy. There's also a premium voice option, which it seems is not stored locally and will either cost you $20 a year or $2 a month. And I'll bet you want to hear what they sound like. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice and now that I have it, I am not going to be silent. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I am not going to be silent. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. None of these voice options are great, and Google Home, or even Amazon Echo, sound a lot better. The last part of the basic settings page gives you the option to contribute data to help Mycroft to further the project. Now under advanced settings, things get a little more interesting. One of the best features of Mycroft is that you get to choose your wake word. And it can even be a custom wake word that can be almost anything you want. If you're gonna use a custom wake word, you need to also give it the phonemes, 
but it gives you a link to a website that'll help you do that. Copy the output here and paste it in the phonemes box back on the Mycroft page. Remember to always read the instructions. It specifically says here, don't use the word yo. As far as text to speech engine, if you're looking for privacy, probably best to stick with Mimic, but you may get better performance if you use Google. After you make your choice, don't forget to save. Now we can start checking out some of Mycroft's skills. When you first look at the list of skills, what you'll probably notice is that there's not a lot of them. That's okay. Some skills are installed by default. You can scroll through the list and see which others you might like to install. If you're a developer, I'm sure they would love some help creating new skills. There are some useful skills and some that look like fun and some that are just silly. They do have Pandora and Spotify if you have a premium subscription. But most important for me, and probably for most of you that are watching, is that there's a Home Assistant skill. Oh, and there's an OpenHab skill too. When you add a new skill, Mycroft needs a little time to download the skill and restart. Some skills, including Home Assistant, need some additional setup. To set those up, you go to your main skills page and scroll down till you find a section for the skill that you want to set up. For the Home Assistant skill, you need the IP address of the machine where you're running Home Assistant, and then you need a long-lived access token. If you've never gotten one of those before, go to Home Assistant, click on your initial, which essentially opens up your profile page, scroll down to the bottom, click Create Token. Give that token a name, then copy all that gobbledygook in the box, go back to Mycroft, and paste it in the Long Live Access Token box. If you're using SSL, select the appropriate boxes, then you're done. As always, make sure to save. The Home Assistant skill from Mycroft is able to control devices in these domains. There are some device types missing from this list, including covers, but as long as you can control scenes, you can do pretty much anything you want. There's also a Mycroft component for Home Assistant. This will let you use Mycroft as an output for notifications, including text-to-speech. To set that up, you need to add lines like this to your configuration.yaml file. Host is the IP address of your Pycroft. Then you need a notify entry with a platform Mycroft. The way I have it set here will create a notification entity called notify.pycroft. And finally, if you want a box to type in text to speech messages, then create an input text entry like this. To finish off your text to speech input text box, you need an automation that looks like this. To get that input text box to show up in Lovelace, you need to add an entity card, give it whatever title you want, disable the header toggle, and then select your input text entity. Then you'll have a box like this where you can type in messages and Mycroft will say them out loud for you. And now it's demo time. Hey Ezra, what time is it? It is 14.10. Hey Ezra, who is George Washington? George Washington is an American statesman and soldier who served as the first president of the United States. Hey Ezra, turn off Office Crown. Office Crown is now off. Hey Ezra, activate scene Office Occupied. Turned office occupied all. Who is Alexa anyway? Is a Google even a thing? Hey, you get off of my cloud. Dr. Z's is amazing. I'm so funny. <laughs> well, that's it. You didn't really think I'd make a whole video without an appearance from the floating head, did you? So what are my thoughts on the Pycroft? Well, first of all, I like it. I like open source projects, and I want this one to be successful. Now, if you're going to judge it based on things like voice quality or time to retrieve information from the internet, then devices like Amazon Echo and Google Home have this thing beat by quite a large margin. But if you want more privacy, and if all you want to do is control your smart home devices, get some audible notifications, 
and maybe listen to music, then building yourself a Pycroft is a pretty good option. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.